The first reading is from the ninth chapter of the prophet Isaiah, beginning at verse 2. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and his name is Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Here ends our first reading. Our psalm verse for Christmas Eve is from Psalm 96, and we will read the psalm verses responsively. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Proclaim God's salvation from the Declare God's glory among the nations and God's wonders among all peoples. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. But you, O Lord, have made the heavens. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before the Lord, all the earth. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. You will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with your truth. This evening's second reading is from the first chapter of Hebrews, verses 1 through 3. In many and various ways God spoke of old to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. He reflects the glory of God and bears the very stamp of his nature, upholding the universe by his word of power. Here ends the second reading. Alleluia, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter, beginning at verse 1. In those days a decree went out from Emperor, Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there the time came for her to deliver her child 
And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Imagine with me the end of the age. On some distant day, there you are, kicking about the dust and rubble, looking for some sort of sign of life. In the darkness and gloom, you're making your way through the rubble of the end of the age. And there you see in the distance something white and curiosity consumes you and you walk up to it and you pick it up, brush it off, blow it off and you're like, what in the world? It's a roll of forever stamps. And you're like, what? How can this be? What is, what is this? You snap to, it's Christmas Eve, and this idea of a forever stamp. What a bold statement that once things are to the end, that forever goes on and on and on, even past the end of all things. Forever is a bold and beautiful proclamation. This forever stamp is an amazing thing to me. I don't know how the post office can do this, where there's like, you buy a stamp today for 49 cents, is that what it is now? I think something like that. You buy this forever stamp for 49 cents today, and that if inflation skyrockets, say 20, 30 years from now, maybe you buy a stamp for five bucks. That that forever stamp will still be good if you hold on to it. That's a bold promise. I love it though, I think it's a great thing. The forever stamp. This is who Jesus is for us. A story of another sort of stamp. It was a class reunion for, a 50th class reunion for this group of people who had, hadn't seen each other in a long time. And the master of ceremonies decided to play a game with this class. The idea was that someone would stand up and then based on what they looked like 50 years ago, you would just yell out the person's name. And the game was going really well at first. People were having a fun time. And then this one man who had suffered the ravages of ill health, and he had been sick for a lot of his life, he stood up and there was this awkward sort of silence. Who was this mystery man? Nobody knew him. And soon after about a minute, it became like, <laughs> this is awkward. We don't know this guy at all. And he took what looked like a light bulb out of his pocket and did this with his finger. He said, wait a second. He said, my son is out there in the lobby. He drove me here tonight. And when you see my son, you might remember me. So he made his way over to the lobby. And it took him a while to find his son. People were beginning to wonder, is this guy going to even come back? And then, finally, those double doors opened. And he came through with his son, who was about 18 years old at the time. And he came through those doors. And upon seeing his son with his dad, 
everybody yelled out the guy's name. Because they recognized the son, they would know the father. That's what tonight is about, that we come to know the Father God through his son, Jesus. Eloquently worded in our second reading for tonight from Hebrews, it says, in many and various ways, God has spoken to us through the prophets of old, but in these last days, he has spoken to us through his son, his son, Jesus Christ, who bears the stamp of God's nature. And so, this evening, this is why we are here, celebrating this forever stamp of Christ our Lord. I was at a basketball tournament last weekend, and at this basketball tournament there was a zillion people. My son's 12 years old, and I think like most of the people from the cities came up to watch this, and St. Cloud, huge tournament, lots of people there. And so my wife and I, we had this idea that we would kind of escape through the back stairway and go up about 20 stairs and then perch out on this balcony to watch our son's game. We watched the game. It was a great place to stand, and we were both kind of leaning up against the railing like this. The buzzer sounded. The game was done. And I was just kind of backing up from the railing, and I looked and I saw this the cutest little two-year-old toddler boy with the biggest brown eyes, blonde hair, and he was looking kind of up at me like, (laughs) like he didn't say anything. He just kind of looked at me like, hey, look what I did. Like as if to say, hey, I climbed up all these stairs without anybody's help. And I looked down at him and he just kind of looked at me and I just kind of looked at him and, and then began to wander. With my wife, Erin, we're like, we're looking around and we don't see mama anywhere. And I don't know baby talk very well, but I tried this one on him. I said, mama, mama, should we go find mama? And he kind of perked up. And so we took his little hands and we went down the stairs. And as I said before, it's like Penn Station down below. The games are just getting out. Parents are just barging their way in to try to find seats to watch these games. And we're walking down this back stairway, and we turn, and it is just like massive crowds of people coming this way. And I'm like, how are we going to find this mother? And boom, it was like an amazing thing. This mother's eyes. I saw that concerned motherly motherly look, and I saw those big brown eyes that this little boy had. And she just came. And she swooped down and picked him up and uh, embraced him with love and care that only a mother can. And she looked at us and she said, thank you. And this is how God loves us. God loves us in a motherly and tender way as if we are his own, because we are his own. We bear the stamp of God's nature because we know Jesus. We bear the stamp uh, of him who loves us. And so it is this time of year, I love receiving mail. It's not just bills, it's Christmas cards that we get in the mail. It's really fun to just see what comes in the mail. I love the outside of the cards, the envelopes with the festive and ornate sort of decorations on the outside with that beautiful forever stamp right there in the corner. And then to open the inside and see the faces, your kids and your grandkids, and how they bear the stamp of your nature through what they look like. Hey, teenagers out there, it's, it's a blessing to, to look like your parents. It's not a curse, all right? These hereditary lines, they're all good. It's all good. And so it's just neat to see how values are passed on from generation to generation. Various ways that you're living out, your kids are living out different ways, different ideas of um, how you've raised them. And kids are all unique and wonderful in their own way. And on so many Christmas cards, it's been fun to see how many people have posed in front of the Trinity Christmas tree. I mean, like, (laughs) a record number of postcards came in this year from uh, the, the Trinity Christmas tree. It's like the second most photographed 
tree in the country, I think, now. Next to, next, next to Rockefeller Center, I think. I, I'm joking, but you know. Okay, I, I got one question to ask you. As a, as a former New Yorker, I got one question to ask you. What's the difference between a New Yorker and a dentist? For those of you who were at the first two services, don't yell out the answer. Okay. The difference between a New Yorker and a dentist. A new, uh, one, roots for the Yanks. The other, Yanks for the roots. Oh, oh, that's bad. But it's crazy cool to see all of you here tonight because it's like a postcard coming to life. With all of you here tonight, seeing your kids and your grandkids, bearing the stamp of your nature, it's awesome. And so it is with Jesus who bears the stamp of his Father God. That's how we come to know who Jesus is um, in and through uh, worship here. God in his infinite nature, with all of his infinite wisdom, the God of the heavens and the earth, has chosen to come to us in a fragile and lowly way, in a manger, through a baby. How amazing is that? Emmanuel, God with us, bearing this Christ child, Jesus, the one who saves. The one who saves us from all of our sins and promises to be with us forever. This promise of forever, it's amazing. How can God say this to us, that he promises to be with us forever? This harkens back to that first opening statement about how can the post office say this 49 cent stamp is going to be good forever if inflation skyrockets and it's $5 a stamp 30 years from now? That's too good to be true. This promise about God, this promise of him being with us forever, that sounds almost too good to be true. But this is who Jesus Christ is for us. He is our forever stamp. So let's take a look at what the forever stamp does. Number one, the forever stamp, it validates that which is being sent. It says, hey, this one's good to go. And number two, it says the price was paid. 49 cents or whatever the stamp costs nowadays, it's all good. And number three, it boldly and beautifully professes and proclaims forever on the stamp. This is who Jesus is for us today in those same three ways, that he validates us as we are being sent into the world, marked and sealed with the cross of Christ forever. And number two, he has paid the price for us on the cross by his death for our sins. He has paid the atoning price for our sins. And the third way that Jesus is our forever stamp is that he boldly and beautifully professes and promises to be with us forever, even to the end of the age. The end of the age, and forever goes way beyond the end of the age. And so God bless you all this Christmas as you spend time with your loved ones who bear the stamp of your nature. And God bless you as you spend time with your families. I know sometimes it's difficult, but you know, it's good times. It's good quality time. And so God bless you this evening as uh, you celebrate the birth of Christ and may Christ be born in your hearts this night. Amen.